When we talk about asynchronous programming within JavaScript, there are a lot of options that you have. For example, you can run them in sequence or in parallel, along with various other options as well that we will look at in this lesson. So let's go. Here we have a function that takes an input value and returns a new promise. We resolve the promise after a particular amount of time, which in our case is one second, with the provided value. The other fate of a promise is that it might fail, so we have a function that returns a promise which we reject with the provided error message string after one second. These are the two reference functions that we will be using to demonstrate the various forms of concurrency. Now it is worth pointing out that even though we are using set timeout in this particular case, it's not hard to imagine replacing it with other forms of asynchronous programming, for example file access on the server or a network request within the browser. Our basic setup for the application is that we import the two utility pass and fail functions and then we have an async main function and we will do all our asynchronous programming within the try catch block within this main function. Finally, we invoke this main function to kick everything off. Now the simplest form of asynchronous programming is a simple sequential or series flow. We invoke the function pass a few times and await the result of the promise storing the result into different variables. This allows us to use these variables immediately for example, we can console log the results before kicking off the next step. Now, if you run this code, you will see that we get the result of alpha after one second, then beta after an additional second, and so on till all the four values are resolved. This means that the overall time of this particular sequence is the combined time of the individual promise resolutions. Now let's take a look at what happens in the presence of failures. If, for example, Charlie were to be something that would fail, then the program execution would stop at that point and this particular promise will throw and we will jump into the catch block and none of the other things in the sequence would execute. And we can see that when we run the code, we get the output alpha, beta followed by the error charlie and there is no delta. Note that for any special handling within your series flow, you can use your standard programming practices, for example wrapping the individual calls with their own dedicated try and catch blocks. This is not true for parallel control flow and you will need utility functions, so let's take a look at another example. In all the parallel concurrency flows, we no longer await the individual promises and simply store the promises into different variables. This means that the work performed by the individual utility functions, which in our case is just a set timeout, kicks off in parallel. Now we can use utility methods provided on the promise global object to see the result of the individual promises and combine them in various fashions. All of these utility functions take an array of promises, so we will always be passing in an array alpha, beta, charlie and delta. First up, we have the utility function called all, which is the most common one that most people will use. It takes the input array and returns a promise, which is resolved to the values of the individual members of the array. So in our particular case, our output will be the array of the strings alpha, beta, charlie and delta, which are the results of the individual pass functions. Now all the utility functions will be executing in parallel, so this means that the final result is returned within one second instead of the previous four seconds. This will be true for all the utility functions within the parallel flow. Now if any of the promises that are passed into promise.all were to fail, for example Charlie, then promise.all will fail with that particular failure. So here, instead of getting the all resolved result, we jump directly into the catch block with the failed Charlie. So promise.all is great when you only care about the successful result of all of the promises. Sometimes that is not true and you want to read the values even in case of failure and sort them out yourselves. This is exactly what the new JavaScript 2020 method all settled is for. So we replace promise.all with promise.all settled. Instead of returning the resolved values of the individual promises, all settled returns an array of objects where the individual members contain not only the status as well as the value in case of success and reason in case of failure. So in our particular case, where alpha, beta and delta are passing and Charlie is failing, we get this array with status fulfilled for alpha, beta and delta and status rejected with the reason error for Charlie. This allows you to filter out the status values yourself. For example, you can check if the status values 0 dot status is fulfilled and therefore read the value of the first promise, which in our case is alpha. And then similarly, check the value of the index 2 to see if the status is rejected and then read the reason which in our case will be the error object Charlie. Now all and all settled are great methods when you are using promises to optimize for time and you really care about the values returned by the individual promises. However, sometimes you are using parallelization 
for other reasons, for example, network redundancy, where you make the same request to multiple sources and only really care about the first one that succeeds. This is exactly what the promise.any method is for. So let's take a look at that one. We can use promise.any to get the first passing promise given an array of promises. In our case, the first promise to resolve will be alpha as that is kicked off first. And you can see that in the output promise result. Now, if any of the promises were to fail, promise.any wouldn't really care and it would simply jump to the next promise that might succeed. So for example, if Charlie were to fail, promise.any in our case would not even blink an eye as alpha will already pass before Charlie fails. However, if alpha were to be the one that fails, it would jump to the next one and it would resolve with the result of beta, which will succeed with the result string beta. Now finally, if all of the promises passed into promise.any were to fail, that would mean that it is not something that it can resolve successfully, so it will actually reject with an aggregate error that all promises were rejected and we can see that in the console. Now sometimes when waiting for the fastest result, you do actually care if any of the promises fails. For example, you execute the same task on multiple machines and if one of the machines fails, you know it's gonna fail on the other one anyways, so you need to know the failure immediately. And that's exactly what our next method race is for. So we pass in our favorite set of four promises that will pass into promise.race and get the output result, which we log to the console in case of success. Race only cares about the fastest one to resolve. So in our case, alpha is the one that's going to resolve first. So if that passes, promise.race will pass. Now, if some promise that is slower than the fastest one, it's going to fail. For example, we have Charlie that is going to fail. Promise.race will not really care as it will have already resolved with the result of alpha. However, if our fastest promise, which is alpha, were to fail, then promise.race will result in a corresponding failure with the result pointing to the failure of alpha. So given a set of promises, if you want the fastest result, success or failure, go with promise.race. And if you only care about the success, go with promise.any. And that's all for this lesson. My objective is always to provide the most amount of information as simply and as quickly as possible. So if you enjoyed this lesson, smash that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.